Let's turn the schematic we made in the last video into a PCB design. So hopefully we haven't made any errors, but obviously we want to check by going up here and clicking this little rules one to perform an electrical rules check and seeing what happens. And you can see we have two labels that aren't connected to anything. Now, this is intentional. It's because we don't have anything to connect to these two. We don't need to connect anything to reset. Unless if you wanted to add a reset button, you could just do the same thing as this, but with reset on this side. But in our case, we don't want them to be connected to anything. So we can say we don't want them to be connected to anything by hovering over that and pressing Q to add a no connect flag. And I added one there, and then it will just give me another one, which I can drag down here. And that just says that we're not planning on doing anything with those ports, so they should be ignored. Yeah, with them being ignored, we pass the rules check, so we can switch over over to the PCB design workspace and work that out. However, before we switch over, we need to actually tell KiCad which physical component we're using for each of these schematic components, um, which is called the footprint for each of those components. So if we go ahead and use the um, mass footprint editor, which is this one right here, the footprint assignment tool, then we can go through each of our components and select what uh, we'd like to use for this. So if you remember this uh, connection uh, 01 by 12, these two are the pin headers that we'll be using to connect our Arduino. So all we have to do is go into the connector. Uh, um, there's a whole connector section here with all kinds of different connectors. We are looking for pin header 2.54 millimeter because that's the standard that the Arduino boards use. So we want the one by 12. It doesn't really matter which of these options we select, horizontal, vertical, whatever, because we're not going to be using any pin headers. Um, from this, we're just going to be using the ones from the Arduino micro and just slotting it in place. So we can pick any of these where it says the one by 12 and then double click to assign it. Um, we could also select both of these to assign them both at once. Okay, now I accidentally signed <laughs> resistor 1 to that. So we obviously don't want resistor 1 to be that. For resistor 1, we want to go down to the resistor section, R, and look for resistor. So here we go. Uh, we want THD because that's the kind of components where they have the long uh, leads and those poke through, and then we can solder them. Okay, so for this one, I think we want this axial DIN 0207, uh, 6.3 millimeters by 2.5 millimeters by 10.16 millimeters horizontal. Um, we can right click and click view selected footprint to see if it looks reasonable and this does we can also press option 3 to view it in 3d and we can see yep that looks like the kind of resistor that we're going for so this doesn't necessarily give you a good idea of size but it does give you an idea of what the component looks like so you can make sure that's not something completely different than the component that you actually have in mind okay so then next is this led up here d1 for diode 1 and if we look for the led section led tht once again we're going to be looking for a 5 millimeter led and we are going to um, we don't want anything RGB because that's going to have like four leads instead of two. So five millimeters, if we go over the LED five millimeter, we can see, yep, that looks reasonable. And if we go into 3D view, we can see, yep, that's the correct LED. That's what we're looking for. And it's five millimeters. So we know it's the right size. Okay. So then the next thing is we need to do the uh, joysticks. However, KiCad doesn't actually have a built-in footprint for these joysticks. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find a link in the description so you guys can download it from there. Uh, once you download it, you still have to import it. So I believe I still have it sitting around in my downloads folder, um, which we should be able to check. Yep, here I have, uh, I copied it just into the main uh, folder right here. This is, it's called uh, all caps joystick.kicad underscore mod. These KiCad mod files can be imported um, by KiCad and used as footprint. So all we have to do is you go to file, add library, and then you choose whether you want this to just be for your project or for all of your projects. Sure, maybe I'll use the joystick in other contexts. So I would say all and then click on downloads and then click on open and now it knows that downloads is a location where it can look for KiCad mod files like this joystick footprint so if we double click on joystick to open it then we can see this is the footprint for our joystick and it's a joystick with a button so you can see there's four mounting holes um, that are just for securing the casing on and then there's like a little button up here and there's a potentiometer here and a potentiometer here so all we have to do is if we close out of this footprint editor then now that we've imported that if we go back to to our uh, footprint editor we can uh, shift select to select both of them then we want to go to our library which is called downloads because we included the downloads folder as one of our libraries you could also move this um, joystick file to somewhere else more convenient and then list that as a library in KiCad but for now we have it there so we've added downloads joystick to both of these and then we just need to assign right trigger right button left trigger and left button all of those will need to be a different type of button an angled button that's angled at 90 degrees so that we can press them in a different way so let's go ahead and get that 
left trigger, right trigger, right button, and a left button. And we're going to go to the button switch THT. Here is the angled one. Um, this is tactile SKHH underscore angled. Um, and this is exactly what the footprint of one of those angled switches look like. So we double click that to assign it. And now we just need to find the, the regular button, which we'll use for the rest of them. This one, I believe, is the correct one here. And there are multiple correct ones. Um, sometimes all that's different is these four pins are in the same place, and all that's different is a little outline around it. If we save that, I think we have added footprints for everything. So we can go over to the PCB editor. But before we do that, let's talk about how we're going to get this PCB manufactured. We're going to be using PCBWay, who are very kindly sponsoring these videos. They have a super awesome some PCB service where you can upload your manufacturing files, change the PCB to a fun color like red, and have it made and delivered to you very quickly. Check out the link in the description to pick up one of these boards right from PCBWay. And we can go ahead and add all of our components to that. So we can press this button to update PCB with changes made to schematic, and then click update PCB and boom all of our components are plopped in for us now um what we want to do is arrange them so if we hover over one of these we press m we can move it m to move this one this is the right stick so it's going to go somewhere down here then we want to move each of these buttons to a reasonable location so the left button be here on the left uh, the left trigger we'll just move it a little bit off of that the right trigger here right button here now once we um add in a like a sort of outline for the shape of the pcb so it can be shaped like a controller then we'll be able to place these a little bit more accurately right now we just want to generally put them in a good position okay so here's our uh, pcb that we've developed so far and what we were doing is importing the actual shape of the board we can go to file import uh, graphics or just press uh, command shift f or control shift f and then what we want to do is change the import scale oh, it's already here to um, 0 0.0215 and i'll include this file in the description we can select the um, file and then uh, when we import it it'll bring in the imported shape for now let's just uh, tighten everything up around them back button and menu button just right on each side left button and right button okay so for these um, on a standard controller they're right over top of each other the left button and trigger are right over top of each other for our controller just to make it a little bit easier we are going to have them next to each other okay so then we'll do the same thing here lining them up staggering them putting them basically right on the edge this one will even stick off the edge a tiny bit first that though let's bring in these um i think we want to rotate these so they fit more and we can go ahead and move the resistor and led in So the next step is to route the tracks for the PCBs. So basically, you can see these little blue lines. That's where it's suggesting, um, oh, the nearest ground port should be connected to this. First, let's do the connections with the digital ports and the VCC ports. We can ignore the ground ports because we're going to use a trick for that to deal with all of the ground stuff at once. So what we do is we go over to here to where this track selector tool, route tracks. You can also press X for that. And then if we click on a port, X to use the tracks tool. And if we're hovering over one, it'll go ahead and start the tracks tool and it's the same as kind of those wires earlier it'll just auto make a path for you so you can see we can just auto drag across there if you zoom in you can see what the ports are we don't need to worry about the ground ports you have to worry about all of the digital ports okay so here um, I'd like it to go around like this so instead like it might do all kinds of weird things like this so if I go straight out I can click to set a corner and then it'll try to use that corner so now here is an instance where I want to use some of the corners because I don't want it to be super weird this is fine um, but I want it to go around these D4 ones so that we can still access them later when we're connecting the D4 wire in just a second here. So if I had done the path that was suggesting there was like through here, I wouldn't be able to access D4. So that's just when you want to keep an eye on. Okay, now everything on this side looks great, except that we don't have this joystick connected up yet, which is where things get uh, fun. Okay, now we do actually have paths through here. If we can get to, uh, a VCC over here for these two, A2 and A3. So let's see. Ooh, VCC is a above a2 and a3 that's actually so perfect we want a2 to be in the one down here so we can draw a line to a2 like maybe like this and then we could do a3 over it to right here so let's go ahead and fix that in the um in the schematic go over this edit this and then we can change this to a2 and we can change this to a3 and just like that all of the problems in the pcb have been solved a2 now we can go do 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 perfect that's a2 then a3 just goes over like that and vcc goes through this hole and it's yeah that's actually just so perfect try to keep them tracks from being too too short just too short segments because that just uh, concerns me 
Yeah, that actually worked out super well. Everything on this side is connected now. So now we just have to do this side. Everything is connected except for the uh, ground wires, which, so what we're doing here is, in this case for the board, there's actually two layers of copper. So instead of there just being other stuff on the bottom side of this copper, there's actually the core of the board, then another layer of copper, then another layer of cover for the copper, and then another layer of decoration on that. So there's a top and a bottom of the board, and each of them sort of have their own copper layer and cover layer and decoration layer. All of this, all of these red lines that we've just drawn to connect everything up are on the top layer of the board. And then on the bottom layer of the board, we can have all all of the ground connections. So the way we do that is we draw out a plane of entirely ground and we put that on the bottom layer. So we place add filled zone and then we just say which layer it's on. So we want this to be on the back layer which is b.cu and then we want to set this to the ground so that this is connected to the ground ports on the uh, Arduino and that's it. And then we can start drawing it out now that we've set that up. That dialog just pops up as soon as you click down the first point. You can see it's already showing us a little blue thing. So we just want to make sure all of the things are in. And there we go. Now that whole area is uh, going to be copper. Now we have to tell it to actually fill that. Edit fill all zones, which is apparently B. And there you go. That's that's the back copper layer. So the front copper layer is this all these little wire things. And the back copper layer is just that little shape. And it's uh, connected to the ground pins. So if we look in closely here, we can see these lines, which show us that those ground pins are connected to it. And also every other ground pin. Okay, let's go ahead and view it in 3D with option 3. And that, that looks good. You could basically basically just send this off to manufacturing. So how you would do that is go to fabrication outputs and Gerber's. So the Gerber file is the main file for manufacturing this board. So you change the directory to wherever you want it to actually output and then you click plot and then you click generate drill files. I don't think the order matters, but you got to do all these steps. You plot it, generate drill files. You want to make sure these settings are correct and then generate drill file, generate map file, and that's it. Now you have the Gerber file, the drill file, and the map file. Um, it's actually a whole bunch of files and what you do is um, to send it off to a manufacturer you can actually just zip all those files up and upload it. I'll show you guys that next video. And now we have our completed PCB design exported and ready to go. Let's go ahead and buy our PCB and assemble all of the components onto it in this video right here.